Hey everyone, my name is Prakash. I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO of Xano.com. Um, today, I'm going to show you how to do webhooks in Salesforce. So for example, let's say a lead is created in Salesforce or an account is created. How do you send that information to another service using Xano? So we're going to learn how to do that today. Now, I don't pretend to be a Salesforce expert. Um, this is something that I have done to kind of uh, alleviate our own needs. So definitely talk to your tech department or whoever manages Salesforce, um, but hopefully you find this helpful. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover a couple things. Um, we're first gonna learn how to create a sandbox account in Salesforce because um, Salesforce, probably a good thing, doesn't allow you to muck with the production data. You gotta create a sandbox account. Then we're gonna uh, play with Apex. And for those of you that don't know, Apex is like a programming language language that is was written by Salesforce and that's what we're going to use to define a class create a webhook uh, create a site with that webhook and then we were going to uh, we're going to create the trigger itself that sends the payload uh, over to Xano so I know that's a lot I'll break it out into chapters um, but here we go so right now I'm in a Salesforce instance and the first thing that I want to do is to create a sandbox site for myself so I'll show you where to do that you're going to click this little gear icon over here and then you're going to click setup now, you may not have access to this. You may need to kind of ask, um, again, an admin to do this for you, but I do. And so I'm just going to show you how it's done. Um, you just type in sandbox and you'll go to environment sandboxes. You're going to click sandboxes right here. And then under sandbox, you're going to be able to create a new sandbox. So this is a new sandbox account. It's, a, it's almost like a different instance for you to work in. So when you create the new sandbox, you're basically going to go ahead and put out the name, the description, uh, and then click next on the license type that you have access to. So you'll need a developer or developer pro access type in order to create this uh, sandbox. You may also be able to do this in production. I'm not exactly sure, but this is the way that I've done it. So you can see over here that I have um, created this sandbox site. Once you create it, it takes like a couple minutes to actually spool up and get ready. And um, the description I put is creating an Apex Trigger webhook in Salesforce. So the way you log into the sandbox site is you click login. So now in my sandbox site, this is here where I can kind of mess around and do whatever I want without uh, messing with the production data within Salesforce. So the first thing that we're actually going to want to do is to create an Apex class. And that basically defines the programming um, within Salesforce that tells uh, the webhook what to do. In order to do that, you're going to click here and you're going to go to Setup, not to be confused with Service Setup. Once you're in setup, um, you're going to type in Apex classes or it's yeah, Apex classes. And you're going to click on that right over here. So you're going to then uh, have Apex classes loaded over here. And um, you can see all these existing Apex classes that have been created. If you click on W, you may or may not have webhook that already exists. This is one that I've actually created already. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to start here. You're going to probably, if, especially if you don't see it, you'll click new. And then in this webhook class, it's going to have like a little code editor. And you're going to paste in code that I will leave at the description of this video. And it looks something like this. So I'm not going to save this because if I try to, it said it would already exist. But I'll go to the one that I already created so you can see it. So let me click W and you should be able to see it right here. So as you can see, um, the code's already written over here. So now we have the class defined. The next thing that we actually need to do is we need to create a site in Salesforce. So a site is something where you can like actually make publicly accessible within Salesforce, but we don't need to make a publicly accessible site. We just need to use it as a container to make this webhook uh, work. So you would just click on this new button over here and I'm going to like edit this in another window so I can see it. Um, but when you click new, um, it'll ask you to create uh, or fill out all this information. You don't have to fill in much, just so you know. This is exactly what mine looks like, right? I just called it Get Push Notifications. You can call it anything you want. You can copy these settings entirely and then click Save, okay? So once you click Save, let me go ahead and cancel out of this. Once you click Save, you'll be taken to the site itself. And what you're going to do is you're going to click public access settings because what we need to do is in here is we need to go to Apex uh, class access. And then here is where we basically assign the webhook class, that one we just created 
to this site. Now, you're not going to see this here for the first time, but you're, all you need to do is click Edit. And then when you click Edit, it's going to have this editor, and the webhook is already there. If it wasn't, it would look like this. Now, you basically just can type in W-E-B. You'll see it over there. You press that, and you click Save. Okay, so then this way it adds the webhook to a working site within your sandbox to use. All right, so now that that's done, we've created the uh, Apex class, we've created the site, we've put the webhook in that site. Now, what we need to do is create the trigger. What do we want to trigger this webhook from? So, there should be an object manager over here, and because I want to use this example to basically trigger. Um, the webhook when a lead is created, I'm going to click on Object Manager, and then I'm just going to type in Lead. And you can type in anything that you want, uh, really, but I'll click Lead. And then I'm going to go to Triggers. So right, so right here, Triggers. And you can see I already have Lead to Intercom here, but if you wanted to add a new one, you would just click New. And then you would uh, fill out the code that I'm about to give you. And the code looks like this. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm naming it right here. It's called Lead to uh, intercom on lead, which is the object after the lead is inserted. And there's different variables that you can play with. If you look at Salesforce's documentation, you can also do it like after update, lots of different things that you can do. On the string URL, this is the Xano URL that I'm sending it to. Um, this is the name of the, uh, the class and basically the variables that fill it out, and then it executes this entirely. So let me cancel out of this right now because I already have it. So I'll go to lead to intercom. So right over here, what I want to do is I'm going to click edit, and I'm just going to uh, change this site right over here. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and add a place to receive the data when a lead is created in Salesforce. So I'll go to Xano. And I'm going to add a new API endpoint, and I'll start from scratch. And I'm just going to call this uh, Salesforce Sync. All right, so I'm going to uh, bring the data in over here. And in order to create a webhook in uh, Xano, the first thing you need to do is change this to a post if you haven't already. So I'll change it to a post. Um, that's the type of request, API request. I'm going to click Add in the Function Stack. I'm going to click Utility Functions, and I'm going to click Get All Input Webhook. So what this does, um, I'll just say from Salesforce. You can say anything you want here. But what this actually does is, is uh, if you give Salesforce this URL, it's going to collect all of this information and uh, just store it in Xano. It's not really going to do anything with it because we have we've not told it to do anything. And then in terms of the return, I'll tell it to return. Um, I'll actually just get rid of the return. I don't, I don't even think we need it. So I'll just do this, get rid of that entirely. Okay. I'm going to copy the endpoint URL, which is public for right now. And I'm going to go back to, um, Salesforce. All right. That URL that I told you about, we're going to go ahead and put that there and I'm going to click save. Okay. So now that it's saved, um, let's go ahead and test it out. Let's create a lead, shall we? So I'll just go to here. And I'll click on sales. And what I want to do now is I want to go to the leads. And then I'm going to go to new lead. And I'm going to say, um, just Mr. Jane Smith, s at jane.com. Um, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, nine. And then I th that's it. I'll just leave it. I'll just do email opt out for it right now. All right, so those are the fields that I'm going to do, and I'm going to click save. All right, so now that I've done that, it says the leads created here. If I go to Xano, and if I click on these three dots and I go to request history, there's nothing yet, but if I hit refresh, I can see that something came through. And if I click on this information and I hit what was sent in the input, you can see the payload of all of the information that I just got from Salesforce. So the cool thing about this is now you can take this input and you can do something with it. So as a quick example, um, let's go to the database in Xano, right? I have a user table um, and then that's a name and email and a password, okay? So if I go back to that Salesforce uh, sync that I just created, I'm going to create a uh, database request. I'll do an add record. 
and I'm going to do um, to the user table. Okay, so I'll just add some of those attributes to the user table. And I'll just save it for now because I want to show you how to do this. So here when you go to the request history, I don't know if you saw that what I did, but you can actually copy the input that's coming in from Salesforce. So then that way when I go to add a record in terms of the name, when I click this, I can go, this is what's coming in from Salesforce. I can click subpath. I can paste in that response and click define. And then let's say I want to use um, Jane right over here for the first name. And then the email, I'll do the same thing, is going to be uh, s at jane.com. And we'll just leave it at that. And then um, I won't do either of these two and I'll just hit save. So this way, when I gets the record, it should add uh, to the database. So let me go back to here. I'm gonna go back to leads. I'll go to new lead and I'm gonna say, um, Mr. John uh, Doe, and I'll do j at doe.com. All right, great. So I'm going to hit save. So now, if I've done this right, the first thing I want to check in Xano is that request history. Is it sending? Yep, it is. Right over here, if I go to the input and I expand it out, I can see j doe, John over here. And if I go to the database and I go to my user table, I can see john and j at doe.com. So the reason why I'm showing you that is because you're able to take that data from Salesforce and you can sort in your database, you can send it to Intercom, you can send it to Mixpanel, you can send it wherever you want. So this is basically binding. When something happens in Salesforce, send it to me in Xano for me to do something with. On the next video, I'm going to show you how to go the other way around, how to create something in Xano and send it in to Salesforce. But I hope this was helpful. I'll put all the resources uh, below in the information. Thanks for watching. You know what? There is one thing that I forgot to mention, and that is how to push the changes from your sandbox all the way to your production Salesforce instance. So the way you do that, I'm in my sandbox right now. You go to the setup tab, that's this gear icon, and you go to setup. And so then when you're here, it's going to, uh, or you're going to look for um, outbound change set, right? Because you're making uh, changes and you're sending them to production. This is just kind of an information about how deployments work. I'm gonna hit continue and I'm gonna go ahead and add what I just did. So there's a change set. I wanna click new on the change set. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in what exactly you did. So added webhook. So added webhook uh, class and trigger to lead object. And then I wanna hit save. So now here, um, there's this thing called change set components. You're gonna click add here. And then the type of things that you're gonna add is we added a class, remember, so I went apex class. And I'm gonna hit this webhook thing that we added, add to change set. And then um, you guessed it, we're also going to add the trigger. Apex trigger, and then I'm selecting this, and I'm going to say Add to Change Set. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll then click Add Profiles, and then I will click System Administrator. You can select the user that obviously makes sense. Um, and then after you have set everything up, you basically just click Upload and go through that process. Um, so that hopefully should tell you now how you can migrate the webhook changes that you've just made uh, on your sandbox account and m move it over to production. So now in production, when people um, add a lead, that webhook then gets triggered. So it'll only work right now with the sandbox account, but you want it to also work with production. This is how you do it. Thank you.